Hi kids and welcome to Chandler's Chapters. My name's Ian Chandler and today I'm going to be taking you through some of my favorite books that I liked as a kid. So feel free to follow along at home and when you hear this chime, turn the page. The book we'll be reading today is called Mike Mulligan and His Steam Shovel and it's written and illustrated by Virginia Lee Burton. Mike Mulligan had a steam shovel, a beautiful red steam shovel, and her name was Mary Ann. Mike Mulligan was very proud of Mary Ann. He always said that she could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. But, but no one could really trust Mike Mulligan. You know, you'd hear information he'd spout out and you'd, you'd question if it was true. You'd wonder, did he just hear that from someone or... Maybe found it on Wikipedia, but... But you were never really sure about this, Mike Mulligan, especially when he was talking about his steam shovel. Nope, I never trusted him one bit. But regardless of whether or not Mike Mulligan was a big, fat, stinky liar, the truth was that he and Marianne had been digging together for years and years. Oh, he took such good care of Marianne. She glistened in the morning sun, and she never grew old. Which, uh, you know, he never really... Explained how that happened either, but, you know, whatever. I'm not bitter or anything. I'm just the narrator. Oh, jeez, more and more accomplishments I have to rid off. Well, it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who dug the great canals for the big boats to sail through. And yeah, I know, it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who cut through the high mountains so that the train could go through it. And look, you don't even have to remind me that it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who lowered the hills and straightened the curves. And by golly, don't even tell me the reason. Oh, you, you went and did it. Yeah, I know. To make the long highways for the automobiles. I know. I mean, look, I don't want to be a petty narrator, but if I'm going to be telling this guy's story, I just want to know that some of it's at least true. I need some credibility here. I mean, I read kids' books. I have integrity. But yeah, allegedly it was Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann and some others who smoothed out the ground and filled in the holes. I mean, if you're going to believe the, the legends, the, the myths. Because whether or not Mike Mulligan had a hand in it, landing fields for the airplanes were in fact made. Okay, now I know this one has at least little credibility because I was there that day. You can actually see me in the lower right hand corner. I'm the pear shaped man with the bowler derby. Oh, I used to be such a good-looking man. Where did I go wrong? Oh, well, youth escapes us all eventually. But it was Mike Mulligan and Marianne and some others who dug the deep holes for the cellars of the tall skyscrapers in the big cities. And, you know, when they'd work, people used to stop and watch them. People like me, who were unemployed. Couldn't, you know, couldn't even support his family. And, you know, the, the more people that would watch, the, the faster Mike Mulligan and Marianne would work, and... The more people that stopped by, they'd work even faster, and it, you know, as a snowball effect, as some would call it. And, you know, some days they would keep as many as 37 trucks busy taking away the dirt they had dug, and that's pretty impressive. You know, I'm not going to say it's embellished a little bit, but I was there, I should know. I mean, I... Uh, okay, I'll stop now, I'm sorry. Oh, this is my favorite part. Because then along came the new gasoline shovels, and the new electric shovels, and the new diesel motor shovels, which are very hard to say back to back. And they all took the jobs away from the regular steam shovels. And this made Mike Mulligan and Marianne very, very sad. As evidenced by their tears, their lowly dispositions, and their no steam shovels wanted sign behind them. And wow, does this panel get a little grim. All the other steam shovels were being sold for junk or left out in old gravel pits to rust and fall apart. But Mike loved Marianne. He, he couldn't do that to her. Oh my goodness. Oh, I think old Mikey Mills is growing on me. That was so heartfelt and nice. Let's keep going. He had taken such good care of her that she could still dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week. Oh, okay. At least he thought she could, but he wasn't quite sure. All right, this is sounding more like the Mike Mulligan I know. 
Everywhere they went, the new gas shovels and the new electric shovels and the new diesel motor shovels, they all had jobs, but no one wanted Mike Mulligan and Marianne anymore. Then, one day, Mike read in a newspaper that the town of Popperville was going to build a new town hall. We're going to dig the cellar of that town hall. And off they started. So they left the canals and the railroads and the highways and the airports and the big cities where nobody wanted them anymore, including me. And they went away out into the country. I'm awesome. They crawled along slowly up the hills and down the hills till they came to the little town of Popperville. And we oh, who's that? Is that a magician? I didn't know they invited magicians to Popperville. I don't know about this place. So to make a couple of long pages short, once in Popperville, Mike Mulligan starts laying these egregious claims again. He's like, yeah, we'll have this cellar done in one day. And they're like, come on, Mike Mulligan, let's be real. Let's be real. It takes like a hundred men a week to do this. And he's like, no, no, me and Marianne can do this in a day. Just just believe in us. Look at her. Look at my steam shovel. She's really pretty. We can do this. And then a little boy, the, the wise Alex, like, you know, I've, I've heard some egregious claims on the internet that you're a big fat liar. How about you, uh, how about you finish by sundown? And he's like, only if you watch me. Only if you watch me. Alright, I don't know about you, but when I hear someone ask a little boy to watch him so he'll work better and faster, I just... That red flag comes up in my mind. But of course, the people of Popperville think nothing of it, because Mike Mulligan's some sort of champ. I don't... What's up with that? Anyways, Mrs. McGillicuddy, Henry B. Swap, and the town constable all come over to see what's happening, and Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann work a little faster and a little harder. They get all sweaty and... Glisten in the sun. And you know, Marianne's still smiling, her usual self. Everything is just fine and dandy, but then this little boy gets an idea. He's like, I'm gonna tell everyone in the town to come over and watch Mike Mulligan. And you know, I'm just like, oh, Mike Mulligan does not need your support. Even the magician's there. Everything's good. And the fire department comes. They're like, holy crap, we're gonna, we're gonna watch this too. We don't have anything better to do. Ah, uh, what can a narrator do to get this much attention? I don't know. And then, and the sun's even watching with its face in the sky, and I'm like, why doesn't anyone pay attention to me? Why? Why not me? I wish this was me. I wish I could be Mike Mulligan. Nobody ever loves the narrator. Oh my goodness. Why doesn't anyone like me? And then everything got quiet. Like, like really quiet. Like uncomfortably quiet. Like, too quiet. But they actually did it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't want to believe it, but they did. Mike Mulligan and Marianne finished the cellar in one day. Wow. Way to go. Now this little boy is saying the stuff I want to hear, though. He's asking the question that's on everyone's mind. He's like, how are they going to get out of this hole? They're in a hole. There's a hole here. So, uh... Ike Mulligan ooked around at the four square walls and the four square corners, and he's like, uh-oh, <laughs> we're trapped in this hole. Yeah, looks like your little parade's coming to an end, Ike Mulligan. And, uh, you know, so everyone started talking. Turns out nothing like this had even happened in Popperville before, so everyone's kind of confused. And then, and then that little boy again, he's like, he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going to suggest something so ridiculous, but, uh, it's it's gonna work out for, because you know I'm this little boy I just know all, and you know he's like let's turn Marianne into the furnace because because that's a that's the logical step let's just let's just turn this steam shovel into a furnace, and you know everyone is happy, everyone except me, I'm still not happy and Mike Mulligan who just found all his information on Wikipedia he just comes out the hero of this story I guess I mean. You know the real moral of this story? The narrator never wins. The end. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's Chandler's Chapters. And remember, you can tune in each week when we'll be reading another book. Until next time, you can rate, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you later.